There's not much more frustrating than writing some SQL, putting your heart and soul into it, and then finding it fails a code review. But in reality, that's probably better than the opposite, which is it gets through code review, goes into production and causes problems. And often it's little silly mistakes we make when we're under time pressure, and they're sort of easily picked up these issues. And wouldn't it be nice if a SQL that runs fine, but ultimately is incorrect or is gonna cause performance problems, can actually be picked up before it creates those problems in production. Since there are so many sort of common errors that we make as developers, if they are common, why can't the database pick them up for us? And you'd be pleased to know that in 23C, we've done just that. Let's look at some examples of the new SQL analysis function. I'll create a couple of tables. T1 is just a copy of DBA objects where object ID is present, and T2 is a copy of DBA objects. Obviously, these two tables now contain some common columns, and a thing I might want to do between those two tables is join them. So here's a query I might write to bring those two tables together. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that I've forgotten something in my haste to write these queries. I've forgotten the join condition. Now, there's nothing wrong with this query in terms of its error status. It will run without error, but of course, because I forgot the join condition, it's probably going to run very badly. This is something hopefully a code review would pick up, or at worst, you'd find out in production. But with 23C, the SQL analysis feature is going to pick that up before it gets to production. You can see there with the explain plan, it's telling me in the notes section, hey, you've done a join here, but you've resulted in a Cartesian product. That's generally or most commonly not something we want unless one of the inputs only has one or very few rows. So it's giving us a warning saying, look, you might want to double check this. It's stopping us before we create problems in a more significant environment. Let's look at another example. Let's say I've done that time old thing of putting a trunk around a date column in order to eliminate the time component from a query. Now, as it stands, there's nothing wrong with this query. There's no index on that column. Therefore, adding an expression around that column isn't a cause for concern. And as you can see here, the SQL analysis respects that. It's not giving me any warnings, even though I've used an expression around the column. However, what if I put an index on that column? Now the expression around the column is perhaps cause for concern because that expression would defeat the use of the existing index I've just created. SQL analysis knows this, and now when I do the same query execution plan, it gives me that warning. It says, hey, the created column has an index. You might want to revisit the way you've phrased that query. And SQL analysis is smart enough not to give me false advice. If I go ahead and take its guidance and correct the query, so I've broken the predicate now so it doesn't use the expression, I don't get the warning anymore. It tells me, yep, everything's fine with the way I've used the created column. Another common mistake we make as developers is using union when we're bringing two row sets together, no matter what. And of course, union can be very expensive because it has to remove any duplicates between the two sets. It needs a distinct result. If the two result sets are mutually exclusive or you want the duplicates or you're happy to have them, then it would be better to use union all and SQL analysis tells me this as well. It warns me that union could be an expensive operation. Union needing to come up with a distinct set of results leads us onto the distinct keyword. I've got a blog post called Mr. Distinct is not your friend, and it can sometimes be overused. Now, in this case here, it's a legitimate use. And as we can see, SQL analysis says there's no warnings or guidance to be given here. But what if I add a primary key to the object ID? Now, by definition, every single row for that object ID is a distinct value. Therefore, the distinct would be superfluous. I rerun my execution plan and SQL analysis tells me nothing. Is this a shortcoming in the facility? No, look a bit closer at that execution plan. We didn't need to give you a warning. Maybe we should have because the optimizer itself managed to optimize away the distinct keyword. It's doing an index full scan. There's no sorting, there's no grouping there. It didn't have to do any duplicate removal because it knew because of the primary key, the results were already distinct. Therefore, no extra work was required. Perhaps we'd like SQL analysis to tell us this anyway, but it's nice the fact that the optimizer as well continues to try help us to make sure our queries perform really well. 
So that's SQL analysis coming in 23C, that little insurance policy to guide you to writing great SQL before it comes a problem in your production systems.